everyone, welcome back to the School of Shabs for a quick video before I sign off for my summer break. I've been so fortunate this year to have met many of you through conferences, events, wonderful festivals. I'm particularly pleased to have connected with so many social work students, many of whom who have graduated this year. A big congratulations to you. Here's a message I recorded earlier, especially for those students who have graduated this year. Hello everybody, a huge congratulations to all the social workers graduating today. Very, very well done. You know, I've been so impressed with the students over the last year. You've shown great courage, grit and resilience, all three essential ingredients for the profession. I'm just seeing and feeling much hope for the profession. I've been particularly impressed by three things. Firstly, the reflective models that the students have been creating. I've been blown away. Some of them can be published. Secondly, your writing, the blogs, the articles, your assignments, so much criticality and reflexivity. Again, you know, it's been amazing. And finally, and most importantly, you've come together to form that community in practice, supporting one another through social media platforms and in other ways. I've been so impressed with that. And you've shown unity and compassion. Again, it's much needed than the profession. So very well done. A huge congratulations from me again. I wish you all the best. Enjoy your day and take care. Bye-bye. So as this is a signing off video before the summer break, I wanted to make a request to all those with supervisory responsibility. Now in my last two videos, I've been looking at the supervisory space and how to include the discourse around race, identity and intersectionality. And I'll continue to do that in September. But for this video, I wanted to take you right back, right back to my very own supervision model. You'll remember the six R's for supervision, the very relational supervision model that I devised uh, last year. So I'm suggesting another way that you can use the six R's for supervision model as a quick checklist in a reflective way through an appreciative inquiry lens to discover if your supervisory space acknowledges the topic of race, racism, anti-racism and intersectionality. And if so, how? So this is something you might want to do on your own as a reflective exercise or something that you want to do with the supervising in the supervisory space to formulate some actions going forward to shape your supervision. So let's look at the six R's. The first R is regular. So do you feel discussions about race, racism, anti-racism, identity, intersectionality, form part of your supervision narrative. The second R is reflective. Reflect on how you think it does, if it does, what is working well and what's not working so well, what needs to change, what models, theories, tools can you identify to support these conversations. The third R, relational. If these conversations do take place, how is this felt? Has it had an impact on the relationship between you and the supervisee, the supervision space, the recommendations that you make as a supervisor and the supervisee's practice with their service users? The fourth are responsibility. Do you both take responsibility for these discussions? Here, you might want to think about and explore who is more comfortable, less comfortable engaging in this discourse. What are some of the reasons for that discomfort? Now, as a supervisor, I do believe that the one with more power, which is the supervisor and the manager, needs to ensure these discussions are initiated. But also as a social worker, I feel it is our responsibility to challenge our lenses and bring these conversations to supervision. The fifth R, realistic. At this point, it is about acknowledging the reality are you as the supervisor or supervisee at different stages? And if you are, what and who needs to do some work around that? The final R, reciprocal, the sixth R. 
Does it feel reciprocal? Has it felt like a two-way conversation? Is it something that both the supervisor and the supervisee feel is important? How has it been reciprocal through the eyes of the supervisee? So I believe by using the six R's for supervision model in this additional way, it gives supervisors the opportunity to recognize one of two things. Firstly, that indeed your supervisory space covers the topic of anti-racist practice. And by engaging with the six R's in this checklist manner, you may have uncovered some better ifs. How can you do it even better? Secondly, there's little, some, or a lot of work to do, and that's okay. You can utilize some of my videos, you can utilize this video, um, some of the other resources I talk about to start engaging with this topic in supervision. I also believe when you engage with the six R's in, in a reflective manner as a checklist, you're subconsciously or consciously utilizing the Mandela model by Professor Tedham in that you're making time to have these discussions, you're acknowledging the needs, and you're also looking at differences, recognizing differences. And through that process, you, you are uncovering one another's life experiences. So I hope you found this video useful. I particularly hope that it can serve as a conversation starter for those supervisors who are not quite sure how to broach this topic through supervision. Remember to like, subscribe and follow me on Twitter. And please remember to practice self-care through the summer. And on that note, I'm going to leave you a message with Pam. Pam, who is the Vice Chair of Basra's Student and Newly Qualified Social Workers. Bye-bye. So as a social worker in this time, it is very difficult to think about well-being, but it's actually really, really important that you find a way to prioritise that because working in these really difficult times, it is so easy to lose sight of your mental health and mental well-being and that you find yourself that you keep going, working, working and, you know, forget to take a break for yourself. So these are the three things that I've sort of done over the last um, few months to help me manage my mental health and mental well-being, um, especially with working from home. So the first thing I would say that has really helped me has been finding work buddies. So within my team, I have people that I have been able to reach out to when I've had a really difficult day. Um, the second thing I would say that has helped is taking time out for myself. Um, there is a general, you know, misconception that when you work from home, that you would have the time, you know, to take time out. But actually I found that working from home, I tend to do a lot more than I would have done in normal times. And I just kept going and going and forgot to actually take time out, even though technically I was at home. The third thing that has helped me, which is something that Shabs has always talked about, is the importance of supervision. Supervision is so priceless, especially right now. You really need to be making use of your supervision time with your manager or your mentor or whoever it is that you have supervision with. It is so important when you're in the office, people are, you know, we're able to all have those conversations in the office but right now no one actually knows how you are feeling and make supervision meaningful make it about you what you want what you're going through because if nobody knows what it is that you're going through then nobody can provide that support for you so it is really important and really paramount that you're able to actually have that conversation honestly with your manager and if it's not asked you bring it up and say how you feel how you're getting on and how this times are affecting you. I hope that's helped and thanks for the opportunity.